Hey, so this is me in the future, and this is what we make in this video. And I know it doesn't sound too crazy, but before I made this video, I made a little sound that sounded like this. Which I know isn't too crazy, but because I made that, that inspired me to create something that sounded like this. And then in turn, once I made that, I was inspired to create something like this. Which is something I'm really proud of, and the reason I'm telling you this is, is because I'm releasing my first single a week from the day this video is released, and I'm very excited. So now we can get in... <laughs> but now that that's been said, we can jump into the video. Thanks, bye. Hello everyone, my name is Inspir Asper, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make your first song in Ableton. Now previously I've made videos before on how to explain Ableton's interface and how to navigate the software, so I'm assuming you have at least a basic knowledge of what we're getting into. Aside from that, the goal of this video is to teach you how to make your first song, or at least part of a song, in hopes to teach you beginners out there a little bit about the software and how you can make music. So let's get into it. I've started a new live session in Ableton, and I like to start off by going into the arrangement view. So now I'm in the arrangement view, I hit tab and that's how I got here. Next, I'm gonna delete these two audio tracks and I'm gonna delete this one extra MIDI track just because I don't like them taking up the space and I don't really need them. You can add them back in easily. So now I'm left with one MIDI track and that's how we're gonna start off our simple little song. Next, I'm gonna arm it for recording. So when I add an instrument into it, I can easily hear the instrument I've chosen if I were to play the notes, let's say on my keyboard, for example. Next, I need to find an instrument to assign to this MIDI track. So when I draw in notes, those notes will be played by the instrument I choose. To do that, I'm gonna go on the left side of Ableton in my library under instruments and pick one that I like. I found a nice piano that I like. I use it in a lot of my songs under simpler pianos and keys. I'll be using grand piano as a simple example. To assign that instrument to the MIDI track, I simply drag and drop it onto the track. And as you can see on the bottom of my screen, I now have my instrument on that MIDI track and I can adjust certain settings if I wanted to. For now, I'll leave it how it is, but you can tinker around with these settings and in most instruments that you choose, there will be different settings you can adjust to pinpoint that sound that you want for that instrument. So now that I've got an instrument on my MIDI track, I'm going to create a MIDI clip so that I can draw in my notes to be played by this instrument. To do that, I go over to my MIDI track and I'm going to click and drag for however long I want my MIDI clip to be. For this case, I'm gonna click and drag until it's at this nine. That means it's nine bars long. Once you've done that, you simply right click within that blue area and you select insert MIDI clip. Now you've successfully created your MIDI clip. This clip is where all of your notes will be stored. To enter this clip and alter the notes, you simply double click. You go down here where you see this horizontal bar. You click and drag upwards. Now you're looking at what's called a piano roll. This piano roll is where I can draw in my individual MIDI notes that again can be played by the instrument I chose. Now when I start making a song, I like to work with the chords first. I like to start off with a nice base of chords and then progress from there. So I'm gonna start drawing in some chords. You notice if I were to click within my piano roll, I can only click and drag to create rectangles. That's because I'm using my cursor as a selector tool. To change it to a pencil to draw in your notes, you can press the B button on your keyboard. So now anytime I click, I draw in a note. For now, I'm gonna turn off this blue headphone icon up here in the top left, because if that headphone icon is activated, anytime I draw in a note, it will play that sound, which, to be fair, I normally love, and I highly recommend you choose, I highly recommend that you select it and use it. But for the sake of me speaking over this video and drawing in notes while I'm talking, that can be a little complicated for me. So I'm gonna turn it off, but I highly recommend you keep it on. So like I said, I'm gonna start by drawing in the chords, which can serve as the base of my song. I'm gonna start somewhere at C, three. In case you're unaware, these letters and numbers on the left indicate your notes, and the different numbers indicate the octave that you're in. So I'll start with C3. I'm just going to draw in a very basic chord progression. Okay, so I just drew in a very basic chord progression, and as you can see, the chords hit at the beginning of each of these bars. So right now, what I have sounds like this. Actually, I'm gonna lower this one by an octave. 
Okay, perfect. So now I have a very basic chord progression. Next, I'm going to elongate these notes so that they last a little bit longer. I'm going to click and drag and highlight all of my notes and then hover to the end of one of the notes and click and drag. You'll be able to extend it when you notice your cursor turns into that little right bracket. So now I have... which again, very simple, very basic, but it gets the point across. For now, I'm just gonna copy and paste this over here. No real reason for doing that. In theory, I could have made my MIDI clip four bars long to begin, but I didn't, instead I doubled that, so I simply copied and pasted it over again. So now we have the beginnings of a song. We have an underlying chord progression playing. Next, I'm gonna create another MIDI track, create another MIDI clip, and I'm gonna add in another instrument. And this time I'm picturing something as the leads, maybe something that can play on top of our chords. So now I need to find another instrument that I like. Okay, so I found an instrument that I liked and I dragged and dropped it onto my new MIDI track. So now the second MIDI track has a different instrument assigned to it. I'm gonna open up my new MIDI clip, extend the piano roll can I see, so I can see what I'm working with. And now I'm just gonna draw in some more notes to play on top of those chords that I made earlier. So again, those chords I made sound like this. And so on. Now I know for a fact I'm working in C major due to the chords that I made. So I already know what notes I can draw on top of my chords to make them sound good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing in notes in a melody that I think might sound good and we'll just work from there. Now if you ever come across a point where you want to draw in larger or smaller notes, you can go to the bottom right of your MIDI clip and you can zoom in or out by clicking and dragging up and down in this rectangle. So if I were to click and drag downwards, I zoom in. And then if I were to click and drag upwards, I zoom out. This can let me draw in finer notes that can lock into smaller grid intervals in my piano roll. Okay, so that took a little while, but I finally made a rough melody. It's nothing too crazy. I only spent a few minutes on it for the sake of getting through this tutorial a little bit faster. And I am using the default Ableton sounds so that people at home can follow along a little bit better. But the end result is this. Which doesn't sound too bad. I think the next thing I would do would be to copy that melody layer and paste it and then add a different instrument onto that, onto that new MIDI track so that you have two instruments playing the same melody. Okay, so I found one that I think might work with the song that we're making. Never mind. Let's try this one. Okay, so I finally found one that I like. I think it fits the theme nicely and works with the melody pretty well. But one thing I'm noticing is that sound is a little bit too loud for my liking. So I'm gonna go here to the right on my MIDI track and lower its volume. I'm gonna do that by simply clicking and dragging down where this orange bar is. This negative five means I've lowered it five decibels from its original volume. And while I'm playing this, I'm gonna lower the volume and you can hear the difference. So I like it there. Negative 12 decibels is pretty quiet compared to the original volume, but I meant for the sound to be an accent, not for it to be pretty prominent. So I think it fits it pretty well. Okay, next I think we need some drums. So I'm gonna go and add in a new audio track and then go into my drums library under Ableton. Under drum hits, go to kicks, and you can find a bunch of raw drum samples. So I'm gonna find one that I like and then put it in. So I found a drum sample that I liked and I simply clicked and dragged it onto my audio track. Now I'm gonna copy this sample so I can easily paste it wherever I want. I'm gonna listen to my song and see what kind of drum beat that I want to go with it. All right, well, first thing I'm noticing is actually this is pretty loud, so I'm gonna lower the volume of the drums. That's much better. Now I'm gonna think of a, a drum beat that I would want to go with this. And now that I'm thinking of a drum beat, now is a good time to mention that I've kept my BPM at the normal 120, the default setting for Ableton. And now that I'm thinking of a pace of a tempo that I want this song to be at, I think I want to adjust the BPM. So I'm gonna to go to the top left and turn it to something like 
135 and see how that sounds. Okay, so now I'm gonna work with that. Okay, so now I've made a very rough drum loop. Again, it's rough because I'm only using one raw audio sample with no effects, nothing of that matter, and it's only, and usually when you make drums, you may want to stack two or three different sounds at one time, but for the sake of this example, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only using one, but it sounds like this. Now you may have noticed I left these spaces open, and that's because I'm planning on adding in a snare sound. So I'm going to create another audio track and then add in some snares. In my drums library on the left, I'm going to look for snares, and then again, find one that I like. So I found one that I think I liked, I added it in, and again, I think it's a little bit loud, so I'm going to lower the volume. And now, speaking of volumes, now is a good time to mention that if I were to hit tab and go back to this view, and you look in the bottom right, this is our volume for our master track. If I were to play all of our songs right now, you'll notice that this volume meter is going into the red, which is really bad. That's called clipping. You don't want that to happen. Basically, the reason this is happening is because we have many layers of sounds happening at once. And as of right now, there is no EQing or equalization, which I could explain in a later video if you want. But basically all these sounds are pounding against each other and the sounds are adding together and they're causing the master track to peak, which we don't want. So I'm gonna lower the volume of our master track to something like negative 10 or so. So now if I were to play. It's a lot quieter, sure, and it may not sound as powerful, but ultimately in the end, this will help you out when you go to master your song, and if your volume's clipping in your master track, it will just sound bad overall. So that's one thing you want to avoid. Always avoid going into the red. So now back to where I, what I was doing. I'm gonna add in these snares in those open spaces that I made in my drum loop. So now my little song sounds something like this. And I think it's sounding pretty nice. Again, given that I'm not using any audio effects right now, it's still pretty impressive. Typically, once you add in audio effects, it makes everything sound a lot cleaner and nicer. Now I'm gonna add in an arpeggiator because I think that would fit the tone nicely. So I'm gonna copy and paste my chords layer and I'm gonna add in an instrument that I like. I'm thinking something high pitched, something high pitched and short. And then once I added that in, I'm gonna go into my MIDI effects library and add in an arpeggiator. If you look at the bottom, you'll notice that it worked. Now if I were to solo this track by pressing this S button, and I listen to the sound, it sounds like this. First thing I'm noticing is it's pretty loud, so I'm going to turn that volume down. Maybe turn it down a little bit more. And I can change the rate of the, uh, of the arpeggiator by moving this knob. Like so. And I'm going to go into this MIDI clip, and I'm actually going to raise everything by one octave. So now it sounds like this. And again, maybe turn the volume down a little bit. This is another one of those sounds that I want to just be an accent, nothing too prominent. And now I'm gonna to listen to my whole track by unsoloing that track and see what it sounds like. Again, maybe that's just a little too loud. And I think I might change the rate So now what I have sounds something like this. And I think I might want to copy and paste my chords layer again, but this time for some strings or maybe some vocal, like a chorus sound to give the song a nice ambient feeling. So now after I added that sound in and adjusted a few volumes, this is what I am left with. which I kind of like. The last key to the puzzle, I think I'm gonna add in a bass line. So one more time, I'm gonna copy and paste my chords layer, go into my MIDI clip, and I'm gonna delete everything but the bottom notes for each chord. Like so. And now I'm gonna add in a bass sound. And after that bass sound is added in, this is what it sounds like.
And there you have it. That's a very basic song. I guess it's hard to call it a song, but it's it's the foundation of one. I'm gonna save my project so I can work on this in future videos. And I know it might not sound like much, but this is the foundation of a song. This is a good place to start with. You just kind of make something, throw it together, and then see what kind of what ideas pop off of your head. For example, before making this video, I threw together a, a few sounds to see if I had any ideas on where I wanted to go, and I ended up making something that sounded like this. Which again, isn't too crazy, but I ended up going a different direction and I made something that sounded like this. And then from there, the ideas just kept coming and then I ended up making something that sounded like this. But again, all because I started with this. A very basic idea, a very basic small segment of a song, but once I made that, the ideas came to me and I ended up making that end result, which is going to be my first single, which is going to be released a week from the date this video is released. So I know it doesn't sound like much and I know what we made in this video isn't too crazy, too complicated, but again, it can really get you somewhere if you take the time to put in the small work. So that'll do it, hope you learned. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video.